right. All right, guys, we are live here with Annalise. Um, found her on TikTok, actually. She had the desire to convert her setup here and move into her van. So she's got a really cool van. Uh, we're gonna go into her story here. How you doing, Annalise? Good, how are you? Good, good, really good. Um, so you're calling, you said out of Washington, right? I am, yes. Absolutely. About 20 oh. minutes outside of Seattle. Nice, nice. I was actually there, actually, not too long ago. I was in uh, Kirkland. You oh, yeah? Okay. Time there? Yeah, it was really nice. I checked it out. Yeah, it's a really nice area there. Yeah. So I'm curious. You got this van set up. What? How long ago did you convert it? And what was the main, like, inspiration behind, like, wanting to, okay, I'm going to fucking hit the road? So I got it in 2018. I was 22 at the time. And I had just completed a 12 month lease on an apartment. I was kind of in a phase of life where I was deciding what to do next. I really, yeah. I'd done the whole corporate thing. I actually had a really good job working nine to five in an office and I would just- what, what was your job? I did sales for a property management company in Park City, Utah. Okay. We managed like the Sundance Film Festival and everything. I mean, it was an amazing job. I had the full benefits and everything, but I just was like, starting the question like okay <laughs> i'm doing this 40 hour work week thing and like there has to be more to life than yeah this, you know? so if you don't mind i'm just really curious because i feel like a lot of people like you know they are in college they get out of college and they're like oh i gotta get that job I gotta land that job you know like if you mind sharing like how much you were making how long you were in the job and kind of what was going through your mind like when you were like from the start to finish yeah i um, started off just m making $13 an hour, but then we had, uh, we did all the lodging for the Sundance Film Festival and all these huge events that happened in Park City. And so I had 1% commission on like all of my sales I would do. So I ended up making like 60000 a year, you know, um, and it just like, I don't know. I was like, and it, I had potential for growth. I could be making a lot more than yeah. that if I stayed with that company. How long were you with them? Only a year. Yeah. Only a year. It was only yeah. a year. I felt like, I know it's so funny, you know, because I feel like I, I went through a similar thing myself. I was at, you know, Xerox for like eight months and, you know, I landed the job. I'm like, oh, perfect. You know, I'm making 45, 50,000 a year. Um, you know, like with a reputable company, right. It's like, what everyone thinks they want and then it's like you get right. into it and it's like shit you know is this everything um right so that's cool so your you your lease was up and then you're like did you start building out the van ahead of time or lease ended you i didn't quit? how was the transition so i my lease was up i went i moved into another apartment for like two months i for some reason i just didn't want to sign a lease i was like i don't know what Fuck i want to do you're like, i don't want to plant roots yeah so I moved into another apartment for just two months. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'll go to my mom's house. And I just, wa I didn't want to stay in Utah anymore. I was like, I'll go there for a few months, figure out what my next step is. The idea for the van came because I saw on Tumblr, it was like a picture of an RV someone had. Oh my God, my dog is trying to get up front. <laughs> One second. No, no problem. She's going to be no annoying. Problem. She's going to be scratching unless I... No, that's okay. Oh, look, you got in the back there. <laughs> yeah, I got all my books. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, I was at my mom's, really wanted to get out of Utah. I saw this picture on Tumblr of an RV someone converted, and I thought that was cool. I was like, that's yeah. awesome. It looks like it's inspired. like a little apartment. Yeah, and my sister was the one that showed me the van, and I was like, okay, I don't know if I can do that. That's such a tiny space. You know, how can you put everything you have in there? But after researching the logistics of an RV and like you either have to park it at someone's place or, you know, it's just a hassle. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You mind doing a quick glance of the van? This is a setup. It's of absolutely course. awesome. I mean, they got, she's got the countertop, the <laughs> sink. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Look at that. Yeah, I'll do a little. Literally everything you need. Look at These that. These are my two closets. It's like, I have all my clothes in there. That's yeah, got the spice rack, the plants. I do. Yeah, the whole thing. That's awesome. On my couch, I have my whole setup back there right now. But yeah, so does that fold down? Does your desk like fold down to like a full bed or? 
Yeah, yeah. My I have a video on TikTok, but this just pulls out, and then I have a big bed back here. It's like a full size bed, I think. That's super. Yeah, it's everything I need. That's um. Awesome. So I wasn't sure if I. I just started looking at ads, and one day I saw this van, and it was listed at like sixteen thousand, which is ridiculous. I thought it was a scam. You never find one for that price. I wasn't even planning on buying one. It was just an idea. I saw it and he was like, well, you're the first person that texted me. So if you want it, like you got to get it tomorrow. And so I was like, okay. And I bought it. So did you have the cash or did you get a loan or kind of? Yeah, I got a loan. Nice. That's great. And what is it? It's a, what is it? What's the car? It's a 2008 uh, Dodge Sprinter. Uh, 170 wheelbase for anyone that knows vans it's the extra long one that is actually yeah then i had to figure out how to build it and everything i was gonna say what was that process i saw (laughs) one of your videos of you trying to like (laughs) a piece of wood and you're like i had no idea what i was doing yeah i really didn't and that's what i want to show people is like i really did just get it on a whim and i the extent of my building experience was assembling ikea furniture i didn't know how to use power tools but we have youtube and yeah, I just researched every stat, you know. Yeah, I feel like so many people have ideas or moments of inspiration or like, you know, things they want to do, but it's like they never get started because they don't understand how the whole process works out. Yeah, it's they're like, like afraid. If you just, yeah, it's like if you just like say out loud, like this is what I want and I'm just going to find a way to do it and you just start, it just kind of works out usually. It does. You Yeah, you just have to do it and break down the steps. And I mean, I'm... Um, it boosted my confidence in myself and that's like the one thing I wish I can show people is that like you literally can do anything <laughs> yes no and it's great you know it starts small I can't wait to see where you end up you know coming down, you know down the years on the road um so you've kind of developed a decent following on TikTok I think you're what like almost 20,000 followers or not quite yet I just had that one video that now got like half a million views and then uh, cause before That's that, awesome. like I got like some attention, but I think I have like 7,000 followers now. Oh, that's but- it. Okay. I thought you had more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Like when you find something that works like that, like ch- keep trying to make remix, uh, make remixes of it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, I had one video, like, video. Up for me of me in the store, like scanning stuff. And, um, I just kept making different videos, but a similar style, you know? Okay. Yeah. And, um, but that's awesome. I mean, half a million plays, like that's a lot of, you know, a lot of traffic. So yeah, it's awesome. We'll see if TikTok stays around, but it's been, I, know, I heard someone was saying it. that Sunday was going to be, there's so many rumors. I feel like I don't even have to figure these out now. It's like, Oh, tomorrow's last day. 15th is the last day. It's like, okay. I'm not even gonna, what have you heard? I heard the article I read said that on Sunday, no one will be able to download it anymore. But if you have it, you can still use it. And I don't know if you can still create content. I don't know. It's we'll have so to see. Who's going to restrict it? China or? I guess Trump is like putting a ban on it. I don't know how wow. it's going to look. That's but it's gonna... a cool platform. Like it works really well. So I hope yeah. it sticks around. Absolutely. It's a great opportunity for sure. I mean, look at, you know, connecting with people, putting out content, inspiring people. That's what I love it for. So um, getting back, you know, to your story, what was the transition like? Um, you know, you left the job, but you were building out the van. You know, how did you get into, um, so you said now, you know, we talked beforehand, you're doing, um, you're riding horses. Have you always rode horses mm-hmm. or is that something, you know, you transitioned into doing, or maybe you could talk a little bit about the transition there? Yeah, I always rode horses. My first job when I was 17 was working for a nonprofit organization teaching lessons. I did that for like three years. Um, Always had horses in my life. And then after I quit that job when I was maybe 20, I didn't have a horse anymore. I wasn't riding. So once I got in my van, I was like, okay, I need horses in my life again. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, this job kind of, I just... I was working as a waitress when I first moved into my van. I was just want to travel. So yeah. I just would like pick up any kind of work I could get work to save a little bit of money so I could travel and then met someone at my job who she was like, well, if you can ride horses, you can come ride for me. And that's how I ended awesome. up here. And I absolutely love it. That changed all my plans. I'm not focused really? on. That's really great. You know, it's like, 
you know, you wanted something and, and it showed up, the opportunity showed up. So now you're yeah. kind of, you have that job there and you said Utah, right? I, I'm in, in, in yeah. Washington. I'm sorry. Washington, yeah. Seattle. So you're kind of planted there for a little bit or is it like you can kind of come and go as you want or kind of what's the setup there? Yeah, I work at those specific tracks seven months out of the year. Uh, the plan moving forward, they have tracks all over the country. And once you're licensed at one track, I can go wherever. I just really like the person I work for right now. So I am okay here for, you know, maybe another year and then I'll start to just move around as much as I want. I was going to say in the winter, they're shut down or? This track is, but yeah, I could go to California or go to Florida or really anywhere and work there. That's awesome. So you can just go from track to track. That's so cool. Riding horses. Mm -hmm. That's really awesome. So do you have any plans um, to, do you think you'll keep riding the horses or do you have any, like, where do you see yourself? I'm curious, like down the road, do you have any other future plans or just kind of like taking you where the moment goes? I do. I mean, I want to do like one of my intentions on getting on TikTok and back on social media is I'd love to create other ways of making an income. I do like, you know, stock investing and other things. Uh, my dad's also an investor. So I want to do some real estate investing down the line. Um, I'll do the horses for as long as I love doing it. Cause I truly, it doesn't feel like a job to me. Yep. Um, but yeah, I have, I feel like that's so important. Exactly I feel like that's so important. You know, like you can grow out of a job, you know, or or, or, yeah. or grow out of an opportunity. Like, I mean, I remember when I was a bellman, like I loved it. The first few months, it was like so awesome. And then it was like, oh, I'm making really no money at all. But yeah. it was like for that time of my life, it just worked. And then I, yeah, like you said, you just kind of like when it becomes not a job and when it, when it becomes a job, then it's like, okay, now it's time for me to to go to something else right yeah I think that's one of the things I love the most about my lifestyle is just the feeling that I'm not trapped at any point at any point I can change I can do something different I don't have a lease I don't you know have any commitments or like expectations that I need to be doing something so yeah, I'm just that's our taking it day by day <laughs> it is I know and it's like it's not it's no longer just you work a 40 hour you know for the same thing until you're 60 which if that works for some people but not, yeah. no not I'm the same way. I you know I like when I first started traveling I flew out you know I went to Hawaii and then South America and I ran out of money came back home at my dad's it's totally broke and um I was like I want to keep traveling I got to find a way to make money you know online yeah. so that I can keep doing this you know and that led me down a rabbit hole um, but yeah, it's, uh, there's the internet has really created so much opportunity to do that. So, yes. um, it's really cool. So, um, great. Well, that's really exciting. Do you think, do you see yourself going international at all? Well, you got the van, so you probably can't, you can't really, unless you got to stay in North America. Yeah. I, I mean, I love international travel too. Like this past winter, anytime I have time off in the winter, that's usually my main focus is trying to go international. Obviously I'm not doing that as much this winter all of my plans are postponed but yeah like last winter I went to Amsterdam Paris um where else did I stop put wow. a stop in Ireland but I yeah I always try and super jealous. I have oh you haven't oh my god no. yeah it's, once once coronavirus passes you gotta get it yeah, I've been waiting and you know what I've been sticking to like the I don't know the um, not out of Europe because Europe's you know more like I like going to the I don't know if third world country is the right word, but like the more or less of a developed countries because it's usually mm -hmm. cheaper. It is. Oh, so much cheaper. Yeah. I've been to Thailand. Like I used to live in Mexico. Oh, you went to Thailand? Up. Yeah, I did. How was it? I've heard really good things about it. Amazing. Yeah. I went with my mom when I was 18, when we spent 30 days there just traveling around. It was oh, Wow. Okay. So amazing. you went with your mom. So I'm curious. Is your family, like mom and dad, they, they into travel at all? or They are, yeah. We When I was 14, my parents came home and they're like, we bought a house in Mexico and our whole family moved to Mexico for a year. My parents are divorced now, but my dad now lives on a boat up in the Pacific Northwest near me. Wow. But he just bought a boat and he lives out there nine months out of the year. So we're, we're all kind of the same. My sister lives in Hawaii. She just decided I was going to say, I, I flipped through her page really quick. Yeah, she's out in Kauai, right? Yeah, she is. That's yeah. So it, yeah, my parents are totally supportive of us. Just that's absolutely amazing. I feel like that's 
one of the most difficult things um, for so many people that want to travel is either, you know, their parents don't support it or they have a really strict expectation of what they think that they, their kids should do. So, and then, no. and then as like us being young adults, we kind of, you know, we fall into that sometimes, you know? Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people. I'm very blessed that my parents didn't put that expectation on me of like, you have to, I actually didn't go to college at all. Like yeah. if I had a career I wanted to go into, I would, but there's a lot of, uh, people who have that expectation like you have to do the four years of college you have to like get into a career and they don't have that kind of support which is unfortunate so did they did they put any pressure on you at all or was it like listen you flower or blossom into whoever you want to be not at all my dad is one of the most like inspiring people ever my dad his story is he went to two hours of college and walked out and he oh. made him like he's been super successful just through investments so that's yeah awesome. they never like if that's your path go for that but they just believe that like if we wanted to do other things like we that's absolutely do other amazing things. so he's made some good money doing like the stock market or real estate or this, he did the stock market he's done construction he like developing properties owning commercial properties all kinds of that's different great. did he have kind of a mentor that he ran into or is he like self-taught no, totally self-taught. Yeah, he's a, a, that's someone you want to sit down with. My dad is. <laughs> like, that's incredible. That really. If you have a conversation with him, he's really smart. Wow, that's really. So incredible. I'm lucky to have him as a mentor. Yeah, so I'm not really worried about when I'm ready to do more investing. I. You can go call. Just mentor. call him. Up, call dad. Say it, dad. I'm ready to learn. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. I know for me, like my parents, no one in my family, like my extended family has ever traveled, like left the country. You know, I think maybe oh, really? my grandparents yeah. might have left, but like, yeah, like when I told people that I was going to Columbia, like people, my whole family was very concerned for that. Like, they're like, what is wrong with Taylor? And I'm like, no guys, like I literally just want to go on an adventure that they didn't understand yeah. at all. And it was difficult. It was very difficult, you know, to, to do something different. Um, but I'm so glad I did it. You know, it changed my life. So yeah, that's so amazing. Like, I'm just glad that you're, you have this platform and you're also an example of just someone who doesn't have that support and you're here showing other people like, look, you can do it anyway. And, yeah. and I think that's and, yeah. the biggest driver for me is that, um, I, you know, it's, I'm so, you know, it's, makes me feel good to hear that there are people out there that don't have that, but, um, parental expectation, but I, yeah, I felt like, um, you know, I did, I felt like there was this heaviness of what I was supposed to do and I didn't like it. I wanted to break free right. from it. And I think that I definitely went through a dark period, um, probably two years ago, trying to figure that navigating that, you know, like I got out of college, I was in and out of jobs and, um, as I'm coming through, you know, as I came out of that and then working to where I am now and seeing all the, uh, you know, the evolution I've gone through. Yeah. Like that's why the num only reason I really post content is, is so that to really inspire the people to, to make, yeah. to not be afraid to just make the decision because you're one decision right. with our life. Right. You know? Yeah. There's this video. I don't know why I'm bringing this up right now, but there's a video I took of myself I was crying the night before I left in my van because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm leaving and like all my friends are here, I'm leaving my family. I don't even know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I was just like, and now I watch that and I'm like, I'm just so great. Like, I wish I could just like talk to myself in that moment and just be like, you're doing the right thing. Because I think like we, we take those steps and if you let that fear hold you back, of just not knowing what's going to happen you're never going to achieve it but as soon as you just move into that space of you know, like I'm open and I you have a vision of the way your life to look it it actually works out 100 percent. yeah you, you couldn't have said any better it's like I don't know what it is I the, the the quote that did it for me was um Tim Ferriss I was reading his book the four-hour work week have you heard of Tim Ferriss at all or I have not. No, okay. I've heard of that book though. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's a big entrepreneur. You know, he does a lot of um, podcasts now, but the quote that I read that just like, it hit me, you know, like you read a quote and it's like, Oh, that was for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I was the thing you fear the most is a thing that you need to do the most. And I was like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, but um, right. yeah, you just figure it out as you go. So I'm curious, you know, you got a little bookshelf in the back there. Um, and at least what are you reading at the moment? Anything? Uh, right now, my book I'm reading over there is, um, 
normal people. I don't read it from <laughs> fiction, but I'm reading that. I just read The Power of Now again. Oh my gosh, that's a book. great book. Yeah, very good book. Highly recommend that to anyone. Uh, the Alchemist, one of my favorites. That's another good one. I just got Big Magic. I haven't started it yet, but I've heard that's a really good book. And Untamed by Glennon Doyle. It's actually right here. It sounds really familiar. <laughs> anyway, this is, especially for women, every woman listening wow, to yeah. this. Wow, yeah, it has a definitely a feminine book. vibe on the cover. That's really cool. Is that what you're reading right now, or you've already finished that one? I've read that one twice already. <laughs> wow. But yeah. yeah. Then I'm so what's the main concept of that one? I'm curious. It seems like it's... That one, it's uh, by Glennon Doyle, and she wrote a book a few years ago. A few years ago, called Love Warrior. She was going through a divorce, and that's a really powerful book. But this one, she's now writing it a few years later, where she's just after getting divorced, she just found freedom. Just like everything that we've been told we need to be as a woman, specifically, and like she's just like, I'm it's not gonna awesome. do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's amazing yeah highly recommend that one. recommend for women in gen in everyone or most probably particularly women but yeah i think yeah everyone could benefit from it but yeah especially for women yeah relationships are interesting i have i found on my journey i've spent most of my time uh single um probably particularly because um as i just go through my path i'm noticing that a lot of the t um relationships people end up in is usually self-serving like we usually end up in relationships for, for, for because, you know, we, we want something out of it, you know, and instead of right. what I feel like if you're going to be in a long term relate, and this is just my opinion, I'm curious to what you think. Um, this is just kind of what I've come to find out. Um, you know, we usually get into relationships for, for like selfish reasons. Like I want to, I don't want to be lonely. I want company or I, I want sex. I want this. It's, I want that. Instead of like coming in um, from being in a good space, and just sharing that space with somebody where I feel like is what right. ought to be done. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, but. I 100% agree. I like, I actually have really no interest in getting a relationship as far as that I'm not seeking one out because I feel like I'm just going to do, I, because, it, you know, I've been in relationships and I think people put, too much focus on that as far as they just want to fulfill their needs right they yeah. want someone to spend their life with and they end up settling whereas I think if you just live your life and figure out who you are which for me spending these past two years basically on my own has been I could if I could recommend thing it would be for everyone to just go spend time on your own yes figure out what you want who you are and you won't be focused on needing to fill that that need. The right person who's meant to be for you, well, if it's supposed to happen, they'll show yeah. up. Well, so so shouldn't be maybe you could speak that to that about a little bit. What do you think it is about just spending time alone that is so transformative? So I wrote a caption about this on my Instagram, but I, one of my intentions with my van is I thought it was going to make me happy. I was like, okay, I'm, I have anxiety, I have depression. And once I get in this van and I can go wherever I want, I'm going to be happy. And then I was in the van and I was like, okay, now I'm in California and I'm sad or I'm in, you know, I'm just like, that is not what brings me fulfillment. And I was really lonely. I was just by myself and I was like, okay, now I get to figure out how to be alone. And that's, the basis of it is figuring out how to spend time with yourself and not feel lonely all the time and it's a process like the first year it, it didn't happen overnight it was yeah I would say about like after the first year I was like wow like I don't even want to be around other people, people necessarily like don't I like my, myself more than I like yeah I like yeah. myself more than I, I resonate I with that else. so hard like it really is and I tell people this it is a process you can get good at being by yourself and not in the sense that you don't want to spend time with other people but that right. you're happy by yourself and when people are there great you get to share it with them but when they're not you're, they're not yeah um, that's great. Right. I, I really resonate with that. I, really, I actually, yeah. uh, like I went on, um, um, a road trip. I, uh, fr I'm from New York. So I went like, I did 30 days and I just went like across the Northern States, you know, 
Ohio, South Dakota, Washington, and then down around. And the first three days were just like, you know, kind of terrible. I was like, what am I doing? You know, some days I was sleeping out of my car and it was like, there's moments where it's super lonely, you know? And then, you know, you, you get out, you know, I made it to Glacier and then you, you have these experiences. But I think the coolest thing about um, being okay with spending time alone is that you, you like, you, you, like you said, you, you give yourself time to be with your own thoughts and you allow yourself to watch your emotions are just up and down. They're so fleeting. Like you have good times and bad times and you don't cling to them. You're just like, okay, they're just happening right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you learn how to be the observer. And that's the power of now talks about that, where you have to be present and be the observer of what you're feeling. You're like, I'm in, I'm feeling lonely right now, but you just observe that feeling and like, you have to ground, which is, that probably sounds woo-woo to a lot of people, but that's yeah, like, No, but know? I super vibe with that. I mean, I love the woo-woo in a sense, but from a grounded sense. Um, have you heard of Ram Dass at all? I have not. Okay, Annalise, you have got to check out Ram Dass. You would vibe with his shit so hard. You got to check out Ram Dass. It's R-A-M, uh, and then his last name is D-A-S-S. -S. He's a spiritual teacher. He just actually passed away not too long ago. Um, but he has an amazing story, really amazing story. And yeah, he talks a lot about that witness um, perspective. Wow, I will definitely check him out. Yeah, so cool. This has been really cool. Um, I'm glad we got to connect and kind of dive into your story a little bit. Um, is there anything else you kind of want to share about kind of, you know, your journey and or maybe some, some lessons you've learned or, or anything? I don't really know off the top of my head. I would say the biggest lesson that I've learned, just because obviously this life is not, it's not like all my problems are solved and like this is what I choose to do every day. And that's what I've learned is that um, you get to choose every day if this is what you want to be doing. If there's anyone out there and they're, because I've been receiving a ton of messages where people are like, I just want your life so bad. I'm, I'm working, you know, and you just look like you're having so much fun. And I'm like, if I can do it, anyone else can. Yeah. And I just hope people will choose themselves and choose what will make them happy in the long run run, and really start living their life because we have one shot at this. And yeah, like should. you get one. You get, like you yeah. get one shot in Annalise. I get one shot in Taylor, and then it's over. Yeah. So you should spend it doing whatever you want to be doing. Yeah, it, it is, and I think you hit the nail on the head. It's a process. You know, it's a it's a. It big, is. It's like sometimes you think you, you oh I'll be happy when I get this thing, and then you get the thing, and it's like oh shit I'm not happy. Yeah. You no, know, the happiness comes from. Yeah, it really is. So that's great advice. Like, I'm really glad we got that um, on for the content here. Um, sweet. Annalise, everybody, where can they find you, Annalise? Do you have any, I know, um, like your Instagram or anywhere else that you'd like to share with people, they can find your content or get, in, get a hold of you? Yes, I am at, on Instagram, at underscore wild AF underscore, and then on TikTok under the same. Wild AF, let's same go. Handle. Yeah. She's wild. <laughs> okay cool cool um awesome Annalise well thank you so much and um guys go check out her content okay she's super inspirational